Transmutation is when one nuclide becomes another. This includes the following processes. Radioactive decay, which is when a nuclide will randomly change into another nuclide with some probability. Neutron irradiation, where a neutron will incident onto the target atom will cause that atom to change into a different nuclide. Photon irradiation, which is where the incident particle is light. Proton irradiation, where, which is where when the incident particle is a proton, and others. In this course, we will only be concerned with the first two, radioactive decay and neutron irradiation. There are many types of reactions that can take a jth nuclide into an ith nuclide. Denote this as the reaction J to I. For example, beta minus decay, fission, and gamma reactions are all processes which can transmute nuclides. Call I the set of all two nuclides and J the set of all initial from nuclides. In most cases, these sets are the same. Also note that most reactions J to I are physically forbidden. For example, it's impossible to go from hydrogen-1 to uranium-235 directly. That said, the transmutation equation for the ith nuclide is the time derivative of the concentration of the ith nuclide is equal to the sum overall from nuclides of the concentration of the from nuclide times the cross-section that takes j to i times the flux plus the concentration of the jth nuclide times the branch ratio j to i of the decay times the decay constant of the jth nuclide. This is all subtracted by the losses of the ith nuclide, uh, which are the concentration of the ith nuclide times the microscopic absorption cross-section times the flux, minus the concentration of the ith nuclide times its decay constant. Let's examine this term by term. dNi dt is the time rate of change of the number density of the ith nuclide. And j of t sigma j to i times the flux is the number density of the ith nuclide that are being created as a result of the jth nuclide interacting with neutrons. Nj of t gamma i to j lambda j is the number of the ith nuclides created as a result of the jth nuclide decaying. Th note that nuclides may decay into many potential targets, so the probability that a j actually becomes an i is given as the branch ratio gamma j to i. An i of t sigma a i phi of t is the loss of the ith nuclide due to the ith nuclide absorbing a neutron into its nucleus and becoming some other nuclide. Similarly, an i of t lambda i is the loss of the ith nuclide due to radioactive decay. If we assume a constant flux and constant cross-sections for the duration of the transmutation, then the transmutation equation is solved by the initial concentration of the ith nuclide times the exponential of the sum over all j nuclides of the cross-section that takes j to i times the flux times the time plus the branch ratio that takes j to i times the decay constant of j times the time subtracted by the loss terms sigma a i flux times time minus lambda i times t. Now in truth the cross-sections and the flux are a function of time because the material composition of the core changes as the fuel is irradiated. So what exactly is a cross-section? A cross-section is a measure of the area an incident particle must travel through in order to interact with the nuclide at some unit distance. Gravity serves as a nice analogy for cross-sections. Suppose you have an asteroid that is potentially on a collision course with Earth. At some distance d from the center point, for a given velocity of the asteroid, 
the Earth's gravity will just barely pull the asteroid in and cause a collision. The point at which this occurs is where the cross-section equals pi times this distance d from the center point squared. A macroscopic cross-section, on the other hand, represents the fact that a material is made up of many, many target atoms. Therefore, a macroscopic cross-section is equal to the microscopic cross-section times the mass density times Avogadro's number divided by the atomic mass of the target atom. Transmutation, therefore, has two important effects for the functioning of reactors. The first is called breeding, which represents higher order nuclide creation, which usually adds reactivity to the core. The other is the creation of fission products, which generally decreases the reactivity. Both the creation of fission products and the creation of higher order nuclides change the composition of the fuel material in the core. Breeding is the process of creating specifically fissile atoms from other fuel atoms in the core, such as fissile, fissionable, or, fiss or fertile nuclides. Breeding consumes neutrons through neutron absorption. The following figure so shows a sample of fresh fuel for a light water reactor. As you can see, the uranium-235 goes down by quite a bit, while plutonium isotopes are bred in to the core. The uranium-238, while it does decrease in its concentration, does not do so nearly as dramatically as the U-235. Let's define the conversion ratio as the unitless number of fissile atoms created divided by the number of fuel atoms destroyed. Or CR equals fissile created divided by fuel destroyed. When the conversion ratio is less than 1, this is just called a conversion ratio and indicates a net loss in fuel atoms in the core. When CR is greater than 1, this is sometimes also called a breeding ratio and indicates a net gain in the number of fuel atoms in the core. Let's consider a simple system with only uranium-238 being converted into plutonium-239. At any given moment in the core, the conversion ratio is equal to the concentration of U-238 times the absorption cross-section of U-238 times the flux minus the concentration of U-238 times the fission cross-section times the flux, all divided by the concentration times the absorption cross-section times the flux. The flux and the concentrations in this expression cancel out, leaving only the absorption cross-section minus the fission cross-section divided by the absorption cross-section. Therefore, we can define the conversion ratio as being 1 minus the ratio of the fission cross-section of U-238 to the absorption cross-section of U-238. Since uranium-238 dominates the mass fraction of the LWRs, as we just saw, th this is not a bad approximation. Along with breathing in the good stuff, that is, the fissile material, we also breed in poisons. Poisons are nuclides that must absorb many neutrons before they fission, decay away, or otherwise react. Because of this, poisons have a net negative effect on reactivity. Call eta of E the average number of neutrons produced divided by the number of neutrons in the fuel region. Most fissile nuclides have an eta value between 1.5 and 3. Uranium-235, uranium-238, and plutonium-241 all have etas of E within this range. Plutonium-239 can have an eta of up to 5 at higher energies. This means that for every neutron that's absorbed, 5 neutrons are added to the core. A poison is therefore a nuclide whose eta is less than 1, and therefore whose reactivity is less than 0. Famous neutron poisons include uranium-236, neptunium-237, and plutonium-242. 
Uranium-236 is rather easy to obtain because uranium-235 plus a neutron becomes uranium-236. So one non-fissioning absorption reaction is all that is required.